Hi guys, Carl here from Glencoe Photography and it's a bit of a miserable day today in Balahulish near Glencoe so I think what I've decided to do is show you a little video on how to use Lightroom. So in this YouTube video I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom in five minutes. Carl here from Glencoe for Photography and if you're new to this channel we've only just set it up so uh, click on the old subscribe button here it helps out the channel and if you want to click on the bell for some notifications and give me a thumbs up I'd be most appreciative. Okay so um, I don't know about you but I find Photoshop all the layers and the masks and oh dear it's about as interesting to do my self-assessment. So um, I love Lightroom I think it's a very easy program to use and I think if you're beginning or you don't want to spend too much time and spend hours in front of a computer, which I don't, um, then Lightroom is the way to go. It's a very simple and easy program. So let's dive straight in here. Okay, what I've got here is a list of all my photos from the last couple of weeks. And I'm gonna pick one from my first video I ever did on YouTube a few weeks ago. And I'm going to pick one here, so I'm going to pick that. So this is the screen that you first get with Lightroom, and you'll import your photographs. To import your photos, you can go into Import Photos and Videos, and that will bring it in from, usually I'll bring it in from my camera, and I'll only select the few. The problem is with cameras now, my D800, which is getting old a bit now, I need to get a new one, but the D800 is a 38 megapixel, so that gives you quite a lot of information. And the problem with that is it starts filling up. So say you go and do a shoot and you've got 50 photographs, then you start importing all them 50 photographs, then you're soon going to run out of memory. Um, and to be honest, probably you know, 40 of those are going to be no, you're never going to see again. So I'm very selective when I pick up my photographs and I'll pick the only ones that I think are going to be potentially good. So I have picked this one here. So that puts me into the library mode here. Look, so I've got library at the top middle there. Um, so that's all my library and I can go through there and I can click and just a little heads up You've got the multi-screen view here or you can go to the single view here So I'm going to pick this single view here and then what I'm going to do is across the top here I've got this develop button So I'm going to click on that develop button and then that gets me into this page straight away So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way down this box on the right hand side here which has everything I need in it it's very logical very methodical and it's easy to use and won't take you too much time okay so we can have a look at this photograph here and it's not bad so this was taken a few weeks ago um, and there's a few things that are very obvious it does look very dark and I can see that on this histogram here and this is my histogram here and I can see actually when the when the photograph was taken in the camera and you'll she'll have a look at my videos and definitely go and check some out just below here if you have a look at my videos i always tend to do a shot and then i will always check that histogram the first thing i'll do is always check the histogram and the reason for that is i'm trying to make sure i've got the right ingredients to bake the cake later on okay so you can't bake a cake with rotten ingredients so when i'm in the field i'm checking that histogram have I got all the data and detail I'm going to need to make a great photograph? And that's really important. If you're overexposed or underexposed in the field, I don't know how good you are at Photoshop or Lightroom, you can't recover that. You can copy over it, but you can never recover it. So really critical to check that histogram. So here is my histogram. And in the field, this actually looked okay. Um, but when I brought it into Lightroom itself, it's telling me it's a bit dark. And I can see that this is the shadows area here. And you can see that that little yellow triangle is telling me that there is some shadow clipping. And actually what I can do is I can click on that and it should show me where it is. And actually it's not very obvious because it's this area here and this area there. You can see that and I click it and click it off. You'll see that goes blue and black. Okay. So. Um, what I want to do is obviously I'm going to need to brighten that up now what you can do is with a histogram you can actually move across your mouth across here and you can drag and drop different things so I'm going to click on this and try and drag that shadows and that's me dragging the shadows up a little bit and actually what you can see then is in the little slider at the bottom what it's also done is it's moved the blacks up okay so now my little triangles go gone and now it's telling me that this is correctly exposed well it's not underexposed I wouldn't say it's correctly exposed it's not underexposed 
So what I'm going to do is I can actually move this in the middle and I'm going to drag up to the middle there. Look, and I can drag it up even better. And that gives me, you can see now my exposure to the level has also increased a little bit. So that's a bit of a shortcut on the histogram. You can move, drag and drop um, the different areas of the histogram. OK, so I'm not going to talk about these little options just now because I'm going to come back to those because what I want to try and do is, is get the exposure and the texture and the colours right and then I'll come back and do all these little things at the top here, this is special sort of shortcut. So I've been asked how I know how to edit my photographs and what works um, and it's a very much a personal judgement and the good thing is with Lightroom is, is it's a simple case of, quite frankly, moving the slider, see if it looks better, if it does keep it there, if it doesn't move it back and that's a simple rule of Lightroom, it's so easy. Um, so this is my white balance here and you can see I can change that white balance, I can change the tint. To be honest, I don't like the tint at all, it's too it's too dramatic and it's too very obvious, I hate the tint. So I'm going to lose, I never use the tint at all, okay? Good, get that back to zero-ish, something like that. Okay, so now I've got down this tone area and I've got my exposure, brighter, darker, obviously, and the contrast. Um, and then I've got all these different options down here. Now, so what I will do with this photograph, first things first, is I can see I've got the filter on here. Can you see this top left here and there's a little bit around the top bottom here and there's a little bit here as well. So I kind of need to get rid of that because it's irritating me and I can keep seeing it. So I am going to come to this top button here and I'm going to go onto the crop tool and I'm just going to drag that down a little bit, just bring it out of the way a bit and then just drag it around so it looks about right. And then if I press the enter button, bang, it's gone. And there it is. So I've lost that much extra um, cropping with the filter. OK, I think then I'm going to try and make some of these colours look a little bit better. So I, my favourite tool here, you've got all these highlights and shadows. Um, because I've done it in here, actually, it's not too bad. Maybe bring the blacks, uh, the shadows up a little bit here. So there's the shadows coming up a little bit. OK, so that brings me a big difference. And then you've got all these sort of different presencing. So these textures um, softens it and then harshes it. I don't really use that too much, to be honest. Um, I love clarity, so I'll give it a little bit of clarity. Look at the difference in that. The clarity off and then a bit of clarity. Just sharpens everything up, gives it that nice look. Um, and now uh, the new dehaze button in Lightroom. It's my favourite slider. So watch this little beauty. Up oh, and bang look at that and you've put some real drama in the shot now just by sliding that slider up so I'm really happy with that what you can see though is back into the histogram you can see that the little white thing has gone on there and you can see that when I click that click it these have gone all blue and that's telling me that is all underexposed so I am going to just move back up and bring my shadows up a little bit further maybe have to bring up the exposure a tad so here we go okay lovely i like that very much okay then i'm going to move down we've got vibrance and saturation and sometimes i like to give it a little bit more vibrance but not too much it's looking a little bit oversaturated it's a bit punchy at the moment so i'm just going to slightly desaturate it a little bit just because it looks a bit, a bit fake which i don't like too much um okay so we'll come all the way down now you've got the tone curves and you can actually play with all these if you want they usually say like a little s curve there works quite well but you're only doing the same as what you've done up above anyway so it's up to you which tool you prefer to use uh, bring that back that looks all right to me anyway okay go so we can have a look at this this color area here and again hue saturation luminance so and i think it's looking potentially a bit blue but i'd like to bring some of the oranges up a little bit here so i'm going to just go into the orange and just slightly bring that up a little bit and maybe a bit more of the greens and bring the greens up a little bit okay so just slightly bring those greens up a little bit that's all i need to do okay so that's giving that nice punchiness there with the grass there and we'll scroll down this i never use this area this is new color grading i don't even use that too much nowadays um sharpening there should be no reason why you should be using sharpening because you should have got it pin sharp in the field and again when i'm taking my images you'll see me i'll click up and i'll have a look at the histogram and then the next thing is i'll have a look how sharp it is and i'll zoom right in and i'll scroll around the whole of the photograph just to make sure it's nice and sharp okay so i don't tend to use sharpening too much um, the noise reduction, well, 
that can be a problem sometimes and you'll see this shot for some reason I took it ISO 250 I must have been playing about with the ISOs there what you can do is you can get your little mic magnifying glass on and if you click on it it'll zoom on in and what that does then is allow you to scroll around the shot and see if there's any noise at all and honestly that looks there's a little bit of grain but actually that looks all right so i wouldn't really adjust that too much Oops. and we bring that back cool okay now we're going to move on down to um, this profile here and the chromatic vibration mm, there's a fine edge here a possibly a fine edge so i am going to give that a little tick on that box see what happens with that and yeah it's very subtle but i can actually just about see that little green hue go away there it is and it's very subtle you might not see that the good thing with lightroom is i'm shooting in raw so the program knows exactly what lens i've got on and it's got in there all the different types of lenses and all the distortions so i can click on that little button and what that does is just change it and just come out of that click on that button and you can see that it now knows that I was on the 16 to 35 Nikon lens and it's just adjusted slightly for that um, distortion around the edges. And I tend to click that as a matter of, uh, you know, automatic. Cool. OK, coming down to there, the transforms. I'm not going to show you all of that. That's pretty much straightforward. And then we're going to go into maybe the cropping. Um, I do like a vignette and this this shot itself, it's quite white around the centre there. OK, and what that's doing is because it's dark in the middle and white around the center, around the outside, what I tend to do is my eyes sort of start in here and it's working the way out the way because this is particularly this area here and this area here. What I want to actually do is I want to, my eye to work into the shot. OK, so you don't want a vignette on all the time. Some people love vignettes, some people cringe at vignettes. But for this shot, I think it's worth putting one on. So I'm going to pop a vignette on here. Here we go. Ooh, that's way too much. Ooh, tiger. <laughs> okay, so there, just be careful. If you can see there's a vignette on, you've gone too far. So uh, just, just bring it back a little bit. Okay, I don't mind that too much. Maybe this area might be a tad too dark. Um, but that brings us round to the bottom of the screens and the calibrations. And again, I don't use that too much because I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. That's how easy it is to transform that photograph. It took me a few seconds. OK, things I can do now, which are quite useful. So we've showed you the crop tool and you could argue this is slightly wonky. I don't think it's too bad, actually, but we'll show you anyway. So you can drag in, drag out. You can lock the aspect ratio if you just want to keep it is. You can actually change the angle here if you want to do that. Uh, you can just do that or you can do that at the top here and you can do the same there. It's up to you. Um, and the good thing is with this is you can either escape out of it or you can press command Z if you're on the Apple and that will suck you back out. It does look a little bit wonky there, doesn't it? So let's have a look at that. Let's do that one again. I've obviously moved it. So we'll put it back to zero. There you go. OK, good. Now, the next thing we can do then is this here is a little spot removal tool and that is actually quite useful if you've got any spotting on the lens now I can't see anything I've obviously got a nice clean sensor this time but I did notice a couple of shots a couple of days ago I had a, a bit of a spot on there um, no, I can't see anything to take off but I'm sure we could get that one maybe that little stone you could argue oh that's distracting me a little bit so we we'll click on the little spot removal tool and we've got our circle here. And what you've got is you've got a size of the circle, size of the brush, and the feather there is the transition between the middle of the brush and the outside. And obviously then you've got your opacity. So I'm going to click on that and if you can press um, command um, open brackets, whoop, controlled open brackets. And that brings up your brush, makes it bigger. Or you can do con control, sorry, um, close brackets and make it smaller. And you can adjust the feather. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, just click, 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 and good old Lightroom, it thinks about it for a while and thinks, oh, you know what, maybe that little section there is pretty good to cover it up. So we'll clone that section over that boulder, and that's what we've done. And to see it a little bit better, I tend to unclick it and see it. Now, what you can see is that's very obviously got that wrong, because you can see these lines, and it's very obvious where that circle is, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I can click on it again and I can adjust this 
to move it somewhere else if I want. So let's move it up here a little bit. Bum, 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 thinking about it. And there it is. Okay, and now if I take it off, it's a little bit better, but you can still kind of see it. And this is where you'd work on that for quite a while. Um, if you don't like it, which I don't, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press the delete button and it's just flew away. Okay, good. So that's what that spot removal tool. If you've got a long area like this, you can drag it for quite a while. Keep your finger on the button and drag it and it will transfer somewhere else over the top. And actually, believe it or not, that's not too bad, is it? Look at that. That's actually not too bad. It kind of mirrors it. And that's the danger is you see this copy with a clone and you see this mirroring. Um, but that's not too bad. But anyway, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't like that. So, botty bye. Okay, so I'm, that's that one. Um, this is the red eye thing. I don't usually use red eyes. I'm doing landscapes. I'll be in trouble if I've got a red eye in my landscapes. Um, then the grad tool is quite nice. I'm going to zoom out here. Oops, just let me zoom out. And... The grad tool potentially could be good so what i can do is i can this is a bit more brighter here than here so i might want to just come down this area here whoops get it right so come down this area here Ooh, bu, bu, bu. and then i might just want to go you know what let me just change the exposure for that area and just darken it a little bit just to balance up the photograph too much something like that wonderful so that grad tool is really quite useful i like that okay and then you've got this mask overlay radial filter i tend not to use too much and then this is the brush option here if you want to use the brush and that's for masking things and stuff like that i'm going to keep it simple so i'm not going to actually show you how to do that in this video cool what do you reckon i like that um so what you can do is you can press f to have a look at it there it is so it's just thinking about it and that's not bad is it i like that pretty good okay so press f back and what you can actually do is you can click on this button here and you can look at the before and after okay and there's the before obviously and there's the after and what a difference that makes just spending a few minutes and that's not taking as long at all just a few minutes to get that sorted um, so that is a wonderful shot i will say one of my bugbears is i quite often see people who are shooting in raw for a start who don't know how to process or don't process their shots and I thought I can't understand why not because you've got to if you're shooting in raw you've got to process your shot haven't you you know so why shoot in raw and then post on Facebook or Instagram all these different photos that you think are okay and look okay but I just wish the potential was there for them and I could grab these shots and get them into Lightroom and I could play with them so Lightroom is really important to use if you're shooting in raw you've got to process your shots and just that five minutes on some of your photos can make a real big difference now if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and click on the notifications and here's some other videos that you might want to have a look at trying to think who I look like here. I can't put my finger on it. Ah, uh, got it.